So you're back to comics. Like what? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. You've gone from Aquaman to how? Like how? <laughs> Every ten years, I like to cycle back to my, <laughs> my roots. Can you talk a little bit about how this project differs from your, your previous comic book experience? That's, okay. That's the same question I had actually. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, this was it was a little tough for me to come back to where where I was. You know, when I began my career you know, 13 years ago, and. Um, I, I said I, I politely would like to do something else, you know, since I, I felt like I'd kind of tried it down this road. And uh, Jeff Johns called me and told me how this was different. It was more human. It was more an exploration of this relationship between Hawk and Dove and, uh, and, and, and this, this backstory of, of conflict between he and the, the rest of the Titans. And, um, and then it was going to be portrayed in a more real, pretty, raw, you know, human way. And it wouldn't have that same kind of glow that, uh, you know, where it's kind of romanticized on a lot of the other shows that they've done. And, um, and you know, and then he kind of pitched me on who, who Hank Hall is, and, you know, it's alcoholic, pill pop, and vigilante. And I was like, all right, well, I guess let's <laughs> give it a shot and see how it goes. So I'm, I'm pleased that, um, you know, everything that was promised has come to fruition, and I think the audience is going to get something that they've never had before because of it. So I'm excited about it. <laughs> and that answers all the questions. Yes. <laughs> it's very um, what are you most excited for the fans to see coming up? Uh, I, I think I, I'm just excited that this, the, the fans are kind of finally getting like a really raw human look at superheroes. I, I think for me, the reason I don't go see, you know, Infinity War movies or whatever these are is because like there's no stakes in it. Like what's this, you know? Everybody feels invincible all the time, and you know I play a superhero without any superpowers. Like, how great is that? You know, <laughs> I, I still remember the f uh, first episode I I, would, I shot this episode 102. Uh, Brad Anderson, the director, and I were standing on set, and it was the first time that we were shooting a scene where I was in in like the, the suit, you know, and like kicking ass. And I walked in and kind of looked. At, there was a big catwalk, like at the top of that thing up there. It was it was high. And he's like, so you're up there, you're kind of crushing some beers, and then, you know, you tell Dove, like, let's go do it. You, you jump down and you get the fight. And I was like, okay. But we've never had this conversation before, so do I fly? Because <laughs> that's a pretty, I'd probably, you know, like, what are my superpowers, you know? Like, do I just, am I super strong? I can handle a jump that size? He's like, good question, good question, man. Um, yeah, let's go with no superpowers. <laughs> I'm like, okay, then, okay. Uh, all right, that informs a lot. So from then on, I played the guy like he had no superpowers, you know, and like you get hurt in these fights. I think that's really cool. Who, who else has explored that, you know? And, and so to me, it's about the humanity. I mean, this guy has a lot of pain. He masks it with, you know, pharmaceuticals and, and codependency. And I, I mean, I and many others, I think, can relate to those kind of human struggles. And that's what I'm, I'm interested in exploring. And if you do it in a fun, entertaining way through, you know, Hawk and Dove and the Titans, all the better. That's what I'm excited about. Uh, have fun typing that out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when we meet uh, in season two, uh, we're really kind of at the end of their journey. Like they're they yeah. they're, they're done with this. They want to get out of it. Are we going to see more of like what that got them into it? Like absolutely. Uh, you'll get the origin story for how they meet in season one and. I will say I've done, you know, I've been in the business for a long time. I've shot some stuff I'm proud of. I've shot some stuff that didn't turn out the way that I had hoped. And I will say my proudest work so far today is episode 10 of this season, which is the origin story of Hawk and Dove. It's such an unexpected de departure from the show. It feels like it, it's like a, a mini movie from just it, it, any canon. I mean, it does. It's it's just a very special break from I think what the show had been doing up to that point, and gives you a great understanding of where at least these two are coming from. And uh, I, it was just beautifully written. The subject matter is. It's a much riskier take, I think, for a studio to talk about the things that we talk about in that show. And again, it addresses things that are real, that, that are dark, and that people experience and spend their life trying to, to move past it. Um, yeah, I'm really proud of it. And, and Akiva and Jeff wrote it, and uh, like really glad on the page for that. And I, I, I hope people appreciate what they do. And you 
mentioned um, Jeff Jones had talked to you about uh, what the story was, you know, to convince you to join up. Is there anything else that kind of surprised you about, like, coming into the show, like, where they took other characters or other plot points? I know you said it's, like, it's darker, it's grittier than what we normally see in superhero stories. Yeah, I mean, I think coming into it, you, you can say, I mean, it feels like a... It's, uh, it's become a little cliche these days to be like, oh, it's darker and gritty. And people started that with, like, Harry Potter 2. They're like, it's darker <laughs> this year, so, like, you've got to come... So like, okay, that, it's like what you say, I guess, to sell people on something being cool. I don't give a shit. That word means nothing to me. Like, what does that mean? Darker? What does that mean? It means there's no light in the thing. What does that mean? <laughs> yeah, what does that mean? Like, see movies that are just pitch black, pitch black. in the sound. That's ridiculous. It doesn't say anything about the content of the movie. That's a great question. I mean, what is darker? I don't... I can't, I hate that word. Are we exploring the human condition in a in a way that, like, you know, scrapes the scab off stuff that other people are afraid to talk about? And yes, it does. And, um, it does it in a really brutal way, which I think you start to see in, like, one and two, you know? It's like no holds barred look at these guys' lives, and it's a look behind the mask. And so walking into the sets the first time and watching, you know, like, Breton work as Robin, I mean, he put a lot of time and effort into what he does, so... I, in fact, like I, I walked in, in, into a stunt rehearsal for the first time, and I saw somebody working the the bow, you know, working the staff, and it was just uh, around the back. It's like holy shit, his stunt man is amazing. And then Brenton finishes up, and he's like, okay, cool, your turn. I was like, that was you. <laughs> I mean, everybody's gone the distance for this to 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 explore these characters, and um, and I love. I love that it's it's also a peek behind the mask. You know, it's not you know you, you don't often get to explore a relationship the way that we do in this. And like we spend time in Hank and John's apartment, and they're not doing anything super. And that's special. That's special. And so getting to explore that, see that happen, see that among other characters, that's been like a pleasant surprise. And where I think they really held true to their promise. I mean, I, you know, I asked for some comics because I didn't know a lot about Hawk. And, uh, and so Jeff John's like, yeah, cool, yeah, we'll take care of you. We'll send you all the, you know, we'll send you some stuff. And so the package arrives, and I was like, oh, cool, I'm going to get to work. I'm going to uh, tell my wife, like, I'm going to be a few hours, like, i got to read. And it was one comic, and I was like, oh, okay, I guess there's not a lot on this guy. Okay, and I read it. Cool, I got it. Okay, I think I get who this guy is, you know, he's brash and, you know, um, you don't have to guess what he's thinking and, uh, and you know, loves justice, all that, you know, I mean, I get it. And I show up and I'm getting to know Minka a little bit and I was like, so what'd you do to get to know your character? She's like, oh yeah, well they sent me all the comics. And I was like, cool, you got that one too? She's like, no, they sent, what? They sent like 80. And I was like, you got like 80 comics? I got one. <laughs> they, they don't give a shit about Hank Hall, I guess, I don't know. But I read one comic, so now I feel like I'm underprepared, but, uh, <laughs> You know, I did my best. Last question? Why do you think that we want it to have a dark storyline with superheroes? You know, like we could just do like regular dramas. What is it about the superhero genre that I think makes it compelling to like see these characters be more broken? I think it gives us hope. I think we all need hope. Uh, we all feel as broken. We all are. We have a hard time talking about it, so getting a chance to escape to a world where we recognize ourselves on screen and also see the potential, you know, to do something great, it gives us hope.